Hey guys, it's TTL back with another rush kit video for you. And today this one's gonna be about the Gigabyte Z270X Ultra Gaming. Now I'm having to film this so far ahead of time, it's unbelievable, it's actually only December the 12th. And yes, you don't get to see this until January the 3rd. Crazy, isn't it? But this is how workloads have to work. But anyway, so this one, because it's so far ahead of time, we're assuming that the price is gonna be around the 119 to uh, basically 120 quid to 125 pounds. Uh, GBP, you know, all of that sort of malarkey. So it's one of their kind of, not entry level gaming boards, but it's one of the kind of more accessibly priced gaming boards at the slightly lower end of the market. But it does come with an awful lot of stuff on the board, which is why we are giving it this dedicated rush kit video. So again, it's a virgin box opening. First time we actually get inside, what we'll do is we'll put the board to one side and we'll have a look at what's down here first. And essentially it's uh, the normal SATAs, although unlike some of the other brands, these are just black. You get uh, four of those in total. You've got some connectors so that it's easier for you to connect the cables from your case to your board. You've got a normal manual, a little bit of a guide on the BIOS and how to fit your memory in, driver disc, but don't forget, if you buy one of these products and you're watching this video and it's been out a few months, don't forget to get the latest drivers from the website rather than using the older disc ones. Because I mean, by the time you even buy this, this CD is a month old. So keep that in mind. And then we have uh, the IO for the back. Um, and again, it's got none of the metal things down the back. It's soft touch. So even though it's a cheaper end board, um, it has got a nice IO. And this is something to keep in mind for later. USB 3 DAC up. I will be talking to you about this in a GIF. The actual board itself, and as you can see, it is still virginial. So we're going to pop the tape off together for the first time. Oh, it fell a bit off then. Maybe it wasn't so virginial. Wow, it's all off now anyway. So it's naked. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to talk about going around the board. Uh, now it's a shame that we can't get it lit up in this video, but when we do do um, its own dedicated video, this section here actually does light up. Uh, and it's RGB as well, so you can change it, but this plastic bit you can actually customize as well because it does come off. You can see it's got a couple of little poppers around the back. So if you wanted to, you could use this um, and you could put your own, we all have kind of a name for our rigs, or a lot of us do anyway, so you could put your name for your rig down here a memorial to someone, um, I'm going to assume that a lot of these are going to end up with um, uh, like a system integrator, uh, like for argument's sake PC specialist or e-buyer, I'm assuming that they're going to end up getting a lot of these made up with their own branding on, which would all be quite cool. But there is quite a lot on this board that we do need to talk about. Now they've, uh, they've got lots of stuff around and about. These little bits down the inside of the memory though, these are RGB and you can change those with the software as along with this, although they're all different zones as well. And they do call this um, RGB fusion. But this lights up, you've got uh, two more trails down here that light up. There are RGBs underneath the strengthened PCI Express connectors. There are some more RGB scattered around here and all these different zones can be set in their own colors uh, individually and you can make them all dance and all kinds of stuff as well. But there are um, six temperature sensors around the board in itself and five of what they call hybrid fan headers. And basically what these hybrid fan headers means is it doesn't matter whether you plug a PWM fan in, which is the four pin one, a three pin one, uh, you can pump a, uh, plug a water pump in and basically it will either do it all manually or you can go in and then manually set them. So if you've got a, a, one of those fans that pulls loads of power, you can go and change it to that. So there's no messing around with them really. Um, some of the other brands you have to have like a specific um, header for your water pump, although you can plug them in anywhere, but they call them, you know, specifically wired. And then that means you've, you know, you might have your water pump and you don't want it down here. You might want it there, or you might have your water pump um, plugged in somewhere different uh, on your board and you might want to use that header there. Well, you can do with these. Also with these, while I've got it picked up, uh, we were talking about the RGBs for this and all the different zones. Well, Gigabyte have done something slightly different with their RGB. So uh, there was the original RGB header and then everybody else copied it and Gigabyte have done something different with theirs. And I personally love this. So basically what you've got here is um, 
12 volt and then the RGB, but it's the end one you need to have a look at. And it's basically RGBW. Now, uh, what you can do with these is you can run into problems where the pinouts are slightly different from some brands of RGB to another. Well, in the software and in the BIOS, you can actually go and set these up manually if you want. So it will work with every single RGB um, uh, kit on the market. Doesn't matter what brand it is, you can manually set these so that it'll work fine. Uh, and the new ones that are coming out now with the RGBW, basically what that means is you normally have an RGB um, uh, LED on there or the cluster on there and then a separate white one as well. And I happen to know that Cable One have got these coming through. But what this also means is you can have um, you can have red and white on at the same time. But also with RGB, what this does mean is the whites can be a little bit blue, sometimes a little bit yellow. With this one, because of the white, you can have a dedicated white LED, which means you've got all options there. But where it gets really clever is this also means that if you have an RGB UV kit where you've got RGB coloring and then you've got a separate UV LED, when you use the white header for that, it means that you can run both as well. So you could have all the colors, uh, and UV at the same time. So it's it, this is brilliant. This is forward thinking. This is out of the box thinking. This isn't just copying the ones that most of the, you know, the boards that um, are selling the most, they've not copied it. They've gone and done their own thing. And I positive, I cannot shout about this enough. It's wicked. Uh, and when we zoom back out, and it will take a long time because I've turned it down. We've still got the amp up audio down the side. So you've got a separate audio trail down here. You've got um, jack caps down the bottom and you've got the amp up audio kind of shield over the top. When we're around the back, you can see you've got your digital audio here. Gigabit Intel Ethernet. USB 2 on this one, USB 3 here with a HDMI at the bottom. There is USB 3.1 and you can see here that we've got an A and a C, a DVI out and a PS2. Now these two yellow ones are the, um, it's basically the, it's a DAC output. And essentially what this means is you can adjust the voltage on these uh, USB. So if you are using a USB external DAC, you'll be able to set it up perfectly for your, um, uh, your DAC to get the best possible um, I'm saying I'm a lot and I'm really sorry but anyway so yes we've got the dual armor design stuff here which basically means it's got a lot more rigidity in all kind of directions and is to be honest with you that is really stiff they're they're totally well on there other thing that we can talk about is it does have a U.2 port down here uh, and then we've got um, uh, it's SATA Express. So you've got four normal SATAs that you can use there if you want, but there's another couple down here. There is also here uh, a header for the Gigabyte Thunderbolt add-on that you can use if you want, but it is an extra, uh, so it doesn't come in this box. Uh, USB 3 outputs here, all lovely, lovely. I've spoken to you about the five fan headers around the board that we've all done. You can also see it's got some pretty slick power circuitry going on. I actually like these heat sinks as well. They're simple and nice. There's no massive color shouting out on the board. Got a nice simple heat sink down here. And because of the, um, the RGB on it, it means you can set it up whatever way you want. Or, obviously, you don't have to have them on at all. So really, guys, that's about all that we need to talk about with this. Don't forget, like I said, you've got lots of customizing options on here. It's all black. You've got your um, M.2 along here, which you've got, uh, it's, the bolt is there for the 80, but it does go up to 110. There isn't another M.2 on here, so it's only a single M.2 board. But don't forget what I said, um, we're expecting at this present moment in time, that it's gonna be around the 120 to 125 pounds, GBP, sterling, all that type of thing. But I think they've crammed quite a lot onto that board considering. So I'd love to know your thoughts. This has been a slightly longer video than we um, uh, kind of planned on, expected to, but do let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, you can also go to the main OC3D channel to go and have a look for the uh, main uh, Z270 and KB Lake reviews if you would like, and we will be doing other rush kit videos like this on other boards on the rush kit channel as well. If you've if this is the first time you found us, I am trying to whiz through these so I don't take up too much of your time. But this is the one time that I will ask you if you like the video, hit the subscribe button.